Well, that old mansion, it just keeps on giving. Well, welcome to Finding America. It is really great to have you here. Well, fall has finally arrived and Christmas is just around the corner. So be sure to sign up and get the brand new Kelico Christmas catalog. And this year it's twice the size with 48 pages full of cool equipment, stories, and even some tips and tricks. Well, I can tell you it always makes for some great reading during the cold winter months. And all you have to do to get yours is go down to the video description below, follow the link, sign up, and get your free catalog in the mail. Oh, and don't forget to use FAUSA at checkout for a very special deal on your order. Well, this week I am back on that amazing mansion permission. What can I say? Every time I go there, I keep finding more things. And this week I found an amazing variety of some really cool relics. Now I decided to go with the big 15 inch coil on the Equinox and it paid off for me yet again. So many cool finds from start to finish this day and I really hope you enjoy watching this one. Well, still using that 15 inch coil and got this target. I'll tell you what, this thing was deep. It was nearly a foot deep. Now I have sprayed it off and cleaned it up. I'm trying to see if I can figure out anything on this. Only thing I'm thinking is maybe part of a rosette. It actually does have a, a little bit of design on the inside here on the outer edge so kind of an interesting piece I'll get it cleaned up a little more when I get home but very impressive uh, a good foot down and it's just a nice solid target it was actually only giving me a 10 sometimes an 11 well, I'll tell you what this is a great example of how good this 15 inch coil a lot of times you get to big coils, they don't separate very well. This one does an amazing job. I have to pardon the dog in the background. <laughs> but I was getting it at 23, 24, and I tell you, it was giving me the fits. I finally found it. It was a 42 Weedy. But what was really cool is these two nails were on either side of it. And uh, these were shallower than the penny. But that big coil locked onto that good target and got through that so pretty awesome it's just a awesome machine and even more awesome with that coil well i'll tell you what that coil really sniffed this one out too it's kind of fitting i have a dog howling at me from across the street because i got a 17 18 six inches down i got a dog tag so these are not sound effects i added there's actually a dog there <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is crazy. This is the fifth one that we've dug here, not far from where Jeremy dug his. And uh, it's a 1920 Tennessee dog tag again. Uh, that's awesome, I don't know. I think we're up to like 10 dog tags out of this property. Just awesome. Well, I was getting a, a nice 10 signal. I dug down, I'll tell you about eight inches, and I pulled out a really nice horse tack iron buckle. So pretty cool. Yeah, we know they had uh, quite a few horses here originally, so been finding lots of horse tack and some rosette pieces. Well, got another nice signal here. It's giving me a 16, 17. Dug down about four inches. And uh, got a nice old key. Hang on just a second. I'm gonna turn off my uh, pinpointer here. Yeah, it looks like I have a nice old key here. Let me get it cleaned off and uh, we'll see what, oh, it's an old Yale key. Okay, there it is. So probably 40s, maybe 50s. That's pretty cool a little find. Well, this next one was kind of interesting. Uh, give me a bit of a high tone. Dug down about five, six inches and uh, check out this old, uh, looks like a lead sinker. 
that's pretty cool it definitely has a lot of age to it so I don't find those very often not a not this far from a lake but pretty cool little find well I tell you pretty impressive depth about eight inches finally pulled it out and I think oh yeah I've got a old lipstick case lipstick tube it's got lots of uh, writing on the bottom can't quite make it out but I'm definitely going to be able to identify this is probably going to be 20s or 30s but pretty darn cool I'll get it cleaned up give you a better picture of it that's a nice old find Well, I was a young boy, William Thomas Raleigh was always intrigued by the traveling salesman that would visit his family farm back in the 1870s. And this sparked a love of sales. And at just the age of nine years old, he began selling ink to his fellow schoolmates and the shopkeepers around the rural area. Not only did he make the ink, but he also bottled and labeled it all by himself as well. Well, over the next few years, W.T. Raleigh continued to make products in the kitchen of the family farmhouse and he continued traveling door to door selling to his rural neighbors and at the age of 18 he finally decided to make a big move and head over to Freeport Illinois where he started his company well with free trials of their products home delivery and honest service the business flourished and hundreds of products were developed in-house at his factory well, W.T. Raleigh believed strongly in the traveling salesman, and by 1915, he had 2,000 Raleigh men out there selling his products. And by 1922, over 2 million American households had let a Raleigh man into their home. Well, the W.T. Raleigh company continued to grow and eventually established locations all over the world. And believe it or not, it's still in business to this day. And I love this story because it's just a great American success story about a young farm boy who became a global business leader through true grit and hard work. Another kind of interesting signal is giving me a 17 to 19, uh, about the 7, 8 inch mark. I, I cleaned this off a little bit, but pretty unusual take a look at it I think it's a piece of horse tack ornamentation some kind of ornament but would have gone in leather I think because this is kind of looks like a rivet on the backside but a concave button <laughs> pretty neat little piece never found anything quite like that but that's my best guess part of horse tack and that's a nice old piece there Another really deep signal. This one was giving me a 10, sometimes an 11. And I pulled it out. It's going to be another lipstick tube. But I tell you what, that thing was 11 inches deep. It was just way down there. And uh, really great job. It was just a super solid signal. Anyone would have dug it. So just another great job with that big coil. Well, this one was uh, kind of an iffy signal. Give me a 17, 18. About the seven inch mark down there. I was fishing around the hole and it slid out. Uh, it's roundish. <laughs> it's very crude. I have no idea. Pretty heavy. Yeah, I don't know what this is. It might be another penny they put on the railroad tracks. Not sure, I'm gonna get it cleaned up, but it's old green like an old penny. Not much detail on it. Uh, I'll put some water on it, see if I can get anything. Well, that's what I'm gonna say this is. This is a flattened penny, probably put on the railroad tracks. Uh, definitely an old one, early weedy or an Indian. But pretty cool, but what a shame. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this coil 
I've been using it for a while, but it just impresses the heck out of me. Incredible depth here. I was getting uh, like an 11, super deep. Uh, came in at about 10 inches, and I finally got it out in my dirt. Check it out, I've got an old nickel. I haven't even looked at it yet. It's gotta be old, it was so deep. Let's see, oh, check it out. Look how nice that wiped. Hopefully you can see that. Got a little glare from the sunshine here. But I have a nice buffalo. Heck yeah. Oh, it's beautiful, dude. Look at that. Oh, that's awesome. I think I might get a date off this one. Let me get a toothpick on it and I'll be right back. But wow. You know, 11 inch deep buffalo. That's awesome. Well, there you go. It does have a date, 1935. Very cool. Uh, that was a very impressive recovery with that Equinox. Uh, I tell you, just uh, literally a foot from where I got that buffalo, I got another Indian of a different type. First thing was this big old nail, square nail, and check out what also was in the dirt. Yeah, check that is awesome. A little lead Indian with a full headdress on. Oh wow, that thing is cool. A lot of original paint on it. How cool is that? Oh, I wish he was whole, but he's pretty cool just the way he is. What a great recovery. Man, that was nice. And uh, again, very deep. Um, at least eight inches. Just looking at the hole, maybe nine. Well, this signal was giving me a 12, 13, sometimes only one way after I dug it out about nine inches down. I can see why, but that is a big pocket knife blade. You can see where it attached down here. That was a pretty good sized pocket knife. So kind of cool, interesting find. And uh, I'm just gonna keep on going. Uh, I'll tell you what, I got something sweet in this hole. Man, I tell you, this thing is just really picking some stuff up really deep. Uh, this one, nine inches. And uh, it finally said it was in my dirt. And check it out. Oh my gosh, it crossed pistols. That is amazing looking. Oh, that's awesome. It was a pin. The first thing that came to my mind was MP, military police, but it's cool as all get out. You can see where there was a pin or some kind of fastener, but check that out. It's like crossed flintlock pistols. I'll have to get it cleaned up, but what an awesome find. Way down there, too. Well, this one was giving me a nine. Dug down, and uh, I'd say about four inches in the plug. I finally pulled it out. I think it's going to have some design. It's a piece to a suspender buckle from that's what it looks like but let me get it cleaned off and uh, we'll see what kind of design it might have holy cow check this out it's got a design it's got a windmill in a rural country scene here that's awesome <laughs> I've never seen one like that oh uh, look how the oh everything about it it's got a couple flowers in the corner but a windmill that is incredible ah, that's one of the coolest ones I've ever dug up that's amazing Well, this one was giving me a 1920. Uh, and believe it or not, I got another cartridge shell and another seven millimeter Mauser. So that's two cartridge shells in the uh, ammo clip. Pretty cool. Well, this is a nice little thing in the hole here. Uh, 
first thing I got out of this, I was getting a 12, and I dug down and I got this beautiful piece of uh, blue and white china. Very pretty. And then, I dug down a little more to get the signal and out popped this. It looks like the top to a compact or something like that. Wow. It's got uh, some writing on it. Hang on just a second. Let me get it brushed off here. I think it says Melba. Wow, that's going to be early 1900s at least. Possibly older. Very cool. I'll have to look that one up and see what it was originally. Well, this actually turned out to be a really cool find because it was the very first compact case ever used by the Melba Cosmetic Company all the way back in 1918. And believe it or not, that case was actually made by the Scoville Manufacturing Company. That's right, the same company that makes all those awesome military buttons that we're always trying to find out there. Well, uh, got another nice recovery. Uh, it was giving me a 19, about six, seven inches down. I just sprayed it off. Yep, it's another 1920 dog tag. I'll tell you, this is number six of the 1920 dog tags. Oh boy, I am very, very happy with this one. Uh, I think it's the same button that Chris found. I think I've got myself one too now. A Tennessee State Seal button. I'm just almost positive. I haven't even looked yet. But look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I saw Chris's and I was like, man, I want one of those. Well, guess what? <laughs> Let me get it brushed off, see if I can get a little more detail. But that is exactly what it is. Tennessee State Seal Button. And these were uh, worn by the Confederate veterans after the war. Oh, man, this thing is in beautiful condition. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> This is a little better condition than Chris's up here, but my shank's been pushed over. Chris had a perfect shank on his, but that's awesome. We both have one. And it looks like it's gonna clean up pretty nice. It says agriculture, commerce, and it has a, uh, a boat on the river in the center. Isn't that awesome? Whew, I will definitely take that. Man, that just makes my day. Well, this place came through for me once again, and I really hope you enjoyed watching this one. And believe it or not, I still have more to share with you from this permission next week. Now, don't go anywhere just yet, because I have some really interesting historical photos from our country's great past coming up in just a few seconds, and I don't think you want to miss these. And remember, it's history that makes a find a treasure, and I can't wait to see you back here next week on Finding America.